what is very effective in understanding the rules of thumb of path, face, and contact, and understanding how to fix biases in those three areas. So I'm gonna to go to the whiteboard and we're gonna talk about this for a second. So here's the, here's the idea. We're gonna start with, we've got path, face, and contact. Those are gonna be the three headings here. We're gonna master all three of these concepts and with this, we're gonna fix every shank, every toe shot, every top, in terms of biases. And we're gonna also fix face bias, which is when we miss right or left, and we're gonna fix path, which is the curve of the shot. So I'm gonna go through these one by one. So contact is basically like, think about a golf club here. And you might have a golfer that keeps hitting it on the toe every time, or they keep hitting the heel, and we're gonna solve that the easiest way possible, doing opposites, okay? And the way I explain it to people is just imagine, this is a super simple analogy, you've got a seven-year-old playing t-ball. And every single time that seven-year-old is playing t-ball, they keep hitting the tee and the ball falls to the ground. And they keep doing that. What would you tell the seven-year-old? How about hit the top of the ball or swing higher? And you know what? It kind of works. It actually works really well. So when I'm working with a 40-year-old golfer, they don't want to go that way. They want to think about what their pelvis is doing or not early extending. And that's called an internal cue. But really what we're doing when we do that is a dual task. A dual task means you're thinking about not only your pelvis, but you're also thinking about or hoping it changes your impact location, when in fact it often doesn't, okay? So I've got a much better way for you to do it, which is doing opposites. Basically the rule of thumb is if you're hitting the toe, we're gonna hit the heel. If you're hitting the heel, we're gonna hit the toe. And we're gonna move this back and forth as needed, and we're actually gonna practice this as a skill, and you will be amazed that if you can practice, we have a drill that we call toe, heel, toe, heel, and that's your warm up. You're not allowed to hit balls and work on mechanics until you can do this, because if you can do this, guess what? Middle of the golf club, center strike is actually much easier. Okay, so we're gonna practice that. So that's the X coordinate, and then you've got the Y coordinate. And the simple stuff here is like do opposites. So a lot of golfers have times where they might be hitting driver and they just keep hitting the tee and popping it up. Well, what's a simple cue there? You pretend the tee is a stick of dynamite and you gotta pick it right off the tee try to not hit the tee at all, and you'll find that you might flush it, right? Or on the opposite side of it, you might feel like you just keep picking it off the tee or topping your shots, you need to knock the tee out of the ground. So we feel opposites to solve all those problems. So that's the why, you got the X coordinates, that's how we take care of impact. And again, there might be some reason that an internal cue or what your body is doing might cause that, but I can tell you, you can do a lot of crazy things in your golf swing and still hit the toe, the heel, the center. So we're not ever gonna use those kind of body movements to change how we strike those things, okay? All right, so the second and probably most important one at the tour level is your face and what we call kind of like face direction or in, in face angle, okay? And so that's really looking at when we're on the driving range, it's what our dispersion ovals look like, okay? So if you're hitting your shots and you're noticing that your shots are over here, you have a bias in your game. You might be missing light right, you might be missing left, and we're gonna basically call that a face uh, bias, and we're gonna fix it doing opposites. Now there's lots of different ways to do this. The face angle is in a relatively decent position here, which is almost matching the spine, which is where most good players are at this point. You should have the skill to go ahead and miss left and right using what we call supination or less supination, okay? And so with a lot of the golfers we work with, we do this drill where in the backswing, we'll have the kid go ahead and swing back or the adult. And at this point of the swing, I'm gonna tell them hit it left or hit it right. I'll say left or right. And they don't have very much time. They have about half a second. And then we say left and they make the ball miss left. And they do that by closing the club face on the way down. And what happens is you get these wild misses this way or this way as soon as they develop that skill. But in fine tuning, they actually get really good at understanding how to fix bias of the face, okay? Now you could find a different way to do this, and this is where we're gonna deep dive a little bit because there's actually some rules that might indicate better or worse ways to do it. Like one of them would be that if you already have a ton of shaft lean, if your hands are really forward, we're not gonna use more flexion. We would just use what we call supination to use your arms to do it, okay? Whereas if you need a little bit more shaft lean and you wanna shallow the club, you might use some flexion. So that's where you and your coach are gonna deep dive on this, but the main point is we're gonna fix face angle bias by doing opposites, all right? So let's go into the last one, which is club path. Now this is where there's a little debate. 
Some people really believe that you should kind of have one shape, hit draws or fades, and maybe not be around zero. I can look at the tour stats and I can tell you on average, the average dispersion on the PJ Tour with an iron, they're right around zero for an iron, okay? With a driver, it's a little bit more like this where you actually see more fades. They're a little bit, actually, I guess it would be on this side. They're a little bit more on this side where they probably fade a little bit more. But the whole thing is not bimodal. What that means is it's not like you're seeing some people hit draws and some people hit fades and very few hit it straight. What you're seeing is that they generally hit their irons pretty straight. And that's our goal for path is that when you step up and you practice, we want your club path to be within two or three of zero. We don't want to see a lot of curve on it. And the beauty of having less curve on the golf ball is number one, it's easier to have a kind of a baseline and be like, all right, well, I don't really curve the golf ball much. My normal shots are going pretty straight and you can get back to that baseline easier. It's also an advantage because if you have a straighter golf shot, you're probably better at fixing it and, sh and basically like um, being able to draw and fade both shots, right? So again, if you had a big draw as your stock shot, a fade is a pretty hard shot. So we like people to be around zero and that means your good shots would look like this, okay? Now the big rule of thumb when you're determining your club path is what do my good shots look like? Because we know if this is your target, you are going to have shots that are going to miss a mile right and a mile left at times. Every golfer does this. You know, so on this side we have the pool. This is the pool over here. This is the parking lot. And you're going to have shots that go these directions if you are a novice golfer. But these are not necessarily going to be a path problem. These are a face problem. The face is being really open or closed. If you think about how hard is face in golf, it's like, uh, you know, a fairway on the PJ Tour is 30, 35 yards wide. You could land a jumbo jet, and yet tour players don't hit more than two out of three fairways on average, right? Golf is hard because of face. But what we can do is we can manage our path, and that's looking at the good shots. So we're going to not worry about the big misses. When we talk about path, we're looking at what do your good shots look like. When you hit the ball in the middle of face, are they draws? Are they fades? Are they big hooks? And you could put a number to these, like it could be a positive 10 path. This could be a positive three path. This could be, uh, you know, this is a zero. This is a negative three. And then over on this side would be like a negative 10. Your job is to not fall in love with the big shape. I want you to keep that thing pretty straight on average.